Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Desi, and you are in the place to be if you love all things magical, mystical, and mysterious. But if you're new, make sure you hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you don't miss out. Whenever I post a video, I post several times a week, every single week, all about the paranormal, witchcraft, and paganism. And if you're into those types of things, definitely join a little witchy family over here. Let me know where you're from and the path that you're on, if you're a pagan or a witch or both. I'd love to know and get to know you guys. And with that, let's get into today's video. Today I thought I'd do a question and answer session because I've been getting a lot of questions from you guys about paganism, witchcraft, working with deities, all of that kind of thing. And I decided I would like to do a Q&A session on deity and everything that I've gotten from that. And if you guys have more questions on anything else, leave them in the comment box below and I'll be sure to make more Q&As later on. So the very first question is from Shiro. Sorry if I butchered that. Um, so you ask, I wish to work with Aphrodite though I don't have candles or quartz to offer her. I took a pink paper, wrote on it, sprayed it with perfume, cut an apple in half, and put honey on it as well. And as I, as I added a circle of sweet almonds and two pieces of chocolate in one bowl, said a prayer to her as well, at, but I need advice and help. Um, this one's very long, so I'm going to cut this in into little bits here um, and just pull the core questions from it. So you've been asking if you've been seeing angel numbers from her. That's very well possible, but many things can send you synchronicities throughout the universe. One, they could be a coincidence. Two, they could very well be a sign from the universe, from your goddess that you've been reaching out to, or it could be um, family and relatives, ancestors, spirit guides, angels, all those types of things. You really don't know until you reach out and ask those types of questions. So it's it's something hard to say, but so it could be any one of your spirit guides, angels, deities, any of those things. Um, but it could be Aphrodite. Um, I'm curious to know which number you are seeing or series of numbers because Aphrodite's sacred number is number nine. And if you're really reaching out to her, I really encourage you to really deep dive into her history and mythology and really learn those things so that when you see things like that, if you see things like 999 or number nine or even like twos, like coupling, like romantic numbers, I find twos to be very uh, romantical or like a pair, like a sacred loving couple. Um, if you see a pair of lovers walking down the street everywhere you go, like nine times in a row or something like that, that would be also probably something from Aphrodite as a sign. It, it could be something from her. I would definitely journal these types of things down when you see them and take note of them and then be able to go back on them later and dissect what they actually mean. And then you go on to ask, uh, how do you know if she accepts your offering? Um, you generally just know in a gut feeling. Um, you'll usually you get a feeling that she's happy with it. Um, or you'll get some kind of thank you. Um, sometimes she'll leave you gifts around um, like seashells. If you find seashells randomly where no seashells should be, for example, or a random rose shows up to your place with no like reasoning for it. Things like this. You'll, you'll, you'll find like little things that belong to her. You might find like a tiny little pearl on your floor, those kind of things. It's kind of like a nod to thank you for returning this energy to me. Um, but, but for most most people, you will just, you'll feel it internally. And if you don't think she vibes with it, I would just ask her. Like any of the person out there, I would just go into a meditative state or go into time, some type of divination and reach out, uh, set your sacred space and your protections and ask her. You know, uh, for me, I created a pendulum for Aphrodite. If you guys want to see how I did that, let me know and I can make a video on how to make your own pendulum for Aphrodite. So this is my pendulum that I created for Aphrodite. It's basically just a seashell that I got from the beach that was cleaned out and nothing was using it. And I um, actually had to glue bits of it back together because it wasn't good anymore. Someone had stepped on it. Um, and then I just placed um, glitter on the top. I ran a chain through it. Um, I put a little bit of sand on the inside to balance it. 
and a few other things that are secret and um, blessed it and I left it on her altar as an offering. So things like this can be an offering as well. You can make tools to work with her that are just for her and she loves those things just the same. Um, but yeah, if you want a little tutorial on how to do this guy here, let me know and I'll show you how I made my pendulum. And then you go on to ask, um, what do I do after having an offering set out? So like what, what do you do afterwards and how long to leave it out? That's something that you kind of have to judge if you have alcohol sitting out or any type of chocolate and you have animals or children. Um, I would not leave those out alone. I would keep them up high and supervised and only for a set amount of days. You can pour an offering every single day and keep it fresh and leave it on the altar for a few hours and then dispose of it as you see fit. Whatever is less harmful to the environment I find is the most appropriate, but if you do have to throw it in the trash or into the toilet or whatever, it's totally fine down the sink. That is totally fine. You don't want to have bugs in your house. You don't want to have anything like that. You don't want to smell mold or anything like that starting to happen because one, that's disrespectful. Leaving things go to waste on the altar. Um, that's definitely it's not what we want. Uh, you just want to leave it for a few hours so that energy is used by her or taken back. Um, it is the act of giving it back to her that's representation of an offering. It's not the physical offering. So you can just throw out the chocolate or whatever it is um, a few days later, a day later. Uh, when it comes to wine or anything with sugar in it, I leave it for maybe a few hours. Um, and then I actually just put it down the sink or into um, the soil if it's okay outside. I generally have one area where it's just okay to like put compost so I'll put it in there and you do mention having a partner stolen from you so I don't know if you're reaching out to her to regain this relationship back again um, but I would encourage you to look at the scenario as if it is a learning lesson from for yourself um, that person may not be for you anymore you may need to grow um, definitely analyze that you can't affect somebody's autonomy okay so if they choose not to stay with you that is up to them they're not stolen they're not your object they are a person they have choice so i don't mean this to be mean like we all we all wish we could do a love spell to like bring somebody back but that is their own choice and you have to respect that um you can do spell work to help open up like communication and opportunities for that information to flow easier or someone to be a little bit more open to receiving that but if they choose that they don't want to accept those things from you or whatever it might be you kind of have to accept that and move on look at it as an opportunity to grow aphrodite is a representation of love in all of its forms not just physical love of another being but physical and spiritual love for yourself so you might have to be in that state of time right now where you are self-examining what is good for you as a person what is good for your soul who you are what do you want out of life those types of things take a deep dive into that shadow work and see why do you think you need another person to be feeling like you are happy be happy within yourself and find a way to learn lessons from her that are not by forcing someone else to be with you because she won't do that. She's not going to make somebody stay with you. That's not what she's about. I hope I got that question right. There's a lot of questions in there and it was a little bit confusing so I hope I answered that okay for you dear. Um, if you have any further questions or you need to clarify let me know in the comment box below and I can answer in a future video uh, or a comment. So the next question I got was what do I do when I'm done with my altar? Um, so maybe I took this question wrong but for me you're never actually done with your altar. Your altar is a living working space. It's a place where you go when things are the most difficult for you that feels safe for you. Where you feel like you can commune with your deities or your ancestors and where you 
are able to reconnect to yourself. So this is something that you should be using throughout the day all the time. And for me, it's where I break up my arms for my tea in the morning. It's a place where I read my cards and talk to my ancestors and seek advice. Um, when it comes to ritual, if you're doing a ritual, you'd close out your ritual as per what is recommended um, and say thank you, maybe leave an offering and then you could just leave your altar, blow out your candles, make sure everything's safe and turned off and there's no flames and um, everything's put out properly and you can just leave your room where you are and go on to do something else and just say thank you to your space. You don't really need to do anything special or spectacular. Some people like to cover their area to keep it protected and shrouded, but for me, it's a living part of my home. For me, it's the heart of my home and I just leave it out to be part of my environment and my space at all times. And that's something you can choose for yourself. Um, yeah, that's basically what you do. You don't have to do anything special for it. So my next question was, how do I work with her or contact her? I'll actually be doing a video all about contacting deities and how to reach out to them. Um, and then one's very specifically on Aphrodite and kind of her background a little bit and doing a little bit of an updated video to my very first correspondence video with her and kind of the idea of working with the idea of archetype of love. So that's going to be a video all in itself and it's going to be a little bit longer. So, um... Just definitely check the link down below or in the playlist. It should be up within a week or so. And that one I'm super excited about. Make sure you hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on that one. So my next question is a little bit more in depth as well. It is, I've never worked with any deity before. I've done so much research for Aphrodite and her offerings and her interests and things she doesn't like. I have candles and stuff ready, but I'm still confused on how I actually start working with her. Is she already with me since I have everything, or do I have to do a ritual to start working with her? I'm really confused. Sorry, how would I know if she accepts? So, there's a lot to unpack there. So, one, for any deity, it is a spiritual relationship. You don't have to have items for them to be with you. They are always around us, and it's whether we accept them into our energies and decide to work with them is up to us. They're there if we want to work with them. Okay, so just like for the Christian faith, you don't need to have items to work with Jesus or Christ or whatever. So like, you, why would you need to have items to work with a pagan goddess? So it, it's not necessary. Yes, in the pagan path, you do give offerings and blessings to them as thank you for working with them and for answering your prayers and those types of things, but um, it's not necessary. It's, it's not necessarily needed to have all these items. A lot of people in the witchcraft community, I find, they're really bad for this, is encouraging people to think that they need physical tools and items and all that stuff to get started in witchcraft or to do a ritual and that's not the case. Witchcraft by its nature and its practice um, and its history is very based on working with what you have and I can actually do a whole video on this later on but there's a whole history to it. It's, it's, it's working with what you have, and if you have nothing, it's working with the energy of your mind and your soul and your body and your vibration. So really, you don't need to have items to work with somebody, um, with, with a, an entity. Um, it's just having that relationship and building that relationship with them, reaching out to them every single day, praying to them, speaking to them, leaving offerings, and searching for answers and then dissecting the answers that you receive in your dreams and in your everyday life and through signs, symbols, and synchronicities and all of that. If you want to work with their energies to bring a spell about, I can definitely do a video all on that. But essentially, you set up your space, you set up your protections. I hope you would know your lore of the entity in question so that you know to decipher 
who is working with you because there are negative entities and energies out there that will take advantage of people and portray themselves as a deity for their entire life and then people start wondering why they start feeling sick and not feeling good and having negative things happen to them it's because they're not actually working with the right entity they're they're accepting whatever comes to them first and not asking questions and not following their gut instincts so you need to know their lore and the mythology and the history of them so that you can better equate to know whether this is person this entity is this energy is truly who they say they are if that makes sense it's just like with every person on the planet you if you don't meet them you don't see who they are how do you know they're saying who they are is true okay so um so that tangent aside um, you don't need items to <laughs> work with an entity, you just need your dedication to them and a spell that you want to work and then ask them to help you and hope that they want to reciprocate. They don't have to lend their energies to you at all. So um, there's no way to summon somebody or some energy. It's not how it works. If they don't want to help you, if they don't feel like it's aligned with what their purpose is and it's not going to better their their cause of helping others, then they're not going to do it. For example, that previous question of trying to get somebody's partner back that left who was stolen. Um, they may have been stolen. It was stolen, but they're, they're not going to... Aphrodite's not going to go pull this person from this other person and bring them back to you, if that makes sense. And um, just because you tell them to, if it doesn't align with who she really is, and that doesn't align with who she is. She's about love and purity and um, passion, and it's not about stealing things back because you, you claim them, if that makes sense. So just know that your working is aligned with them, and then hope for the best, reach out, maybe ask if they'd like to develop a working relationship. Hey, I would like to offer Goddess Aphrodite a pearl necklace, so what should I do after offering her the ne that necklace? Should I wear it or throw it away? I don't know why people think they just need to throw everything away. It's an offering, so if it's a piece of jewelry, you can wear it in as an offering, um, leave it on the altar, you can wear it as a, a remembrance of her to keep her energy with you at all times when you hold it you can connect to her that kind of thing um so if it's a necklace or a bracelet or whatever you can just wear it most days or every friday it's totally up to you you don't have to do anything you don't have to give her a necklace you don't have to give her jewelry or anything like that but if you do want to dedicate that to her energy then wear it when you're working energies on every friday of the month that you are working with her or um, if you were going to wear it during meditation to work with her, I would wear, wear it as a, a way to help you get into meditation and into a meditative state. Um, but you don't have to throw it away. <laughs> There's no reason to waste things. Um, people are in a very wasteful mindset nowadays, and they think they can just throw everything away all the time. Don't throw things away. Don't throw things away if they're of use if they are still good to use. You don't want to be creating pollution and all that kind of thing and wasting pre precious metals or stones. It's not necessary. Keep it. <laughs> At least in my opinion. Um, so this one is also in a little bit more in depth. So, hi, I'm new to this. I wanted to connect with her, but the more I search about how to do it, the more I find most of the videos are for people trying to become a witch or are already witches. Maybe I'm getting it all wrong and my understanding that it's inevitable is that I honestly just want to connect with her to work some personal stuff and not become a witch. Thank you for your time and good vibes. Okay, honey, so um, I stopped saying the names because I can't pronounce some of these guys' years or names, so I'm sorry. Um, but if it's your comment, you'll know who you are. There's a lot to unpack here. So, one... You do not have to be a witch to work with deity, okay? There are a lot of Christians 
who work with Jesus and they're not witches. Actually, most would say they're not, right? There are a lot of witches who are also Christian. So I, this is a lot of confusion that happens a lot in this type of thing because a lot of witches do practice paganism who are also witches. So you need to understand a basic um, stance here. And I will do a video on this later on on my pagan videos. Um, but basically witchcraft is a practice, just like yoga is a practice, just like working out is a, a practice, okay? So you don't have to practice that to work with deity. That is something separate in itself. If you want to work with deity, it's a religious thing, okay? So it's a spiritual thing. So you'd have to adopt their, the culture, okay? And work with it in that way. If you don't want to work with deity in a cultural sense, you can work with them in an archetypical sense. So an archetype is just a manifestation of a certain energy in our everyday life. So like I said, I'm going to be doing a video on Aphrodite the goddess and the archetype of love, the love goddess. Um, so I'll be going over those types of things. So definitely check that video when it's done um, within a week or so. And um, you'll be able to see the difference between working with Aphrodite as a goddess as well as an archetype. So an archetype for me example is Xena warrior princess. She's an archetype of a warrior, okay? So she's energy that I would like to portray in my everyday life and to my workings. If I work with Aphrodite, she is a goddess, so she is a deity, okay? So I don't know why people are this misconstrued that um, goddesses would have to automatically be portrayed in witchcraft gods don't. If you speak of Jesus, you don't automatically think that the person that works with Jesus is a, a witch. It makes no sense to me. So you guys need to start like really diving into critical thinking when it comes to these types of things, especially because when you start researching things on your practice, if you are going to be a witch or if you are going to be adopting somebody's pagan practices to become your own, you want to actually take on that culture otherwise you're appropriating if that makes sense and if you're calling yourself a pagan and then taking things from every different which way it's an appropriation if you're not actually fully practicing that if you don't want to be pagan and you call yourself something else then if you are of an uh an actual abrahamic religion you don't have to be pagan that's okay you can be of the abrahamic faiths and still work with archetypes. Now these wouldn't be goddesses to you, but you can work with the energy, the generic energy of love. Or uh, you can do pop pantheons like I do with Xena Warrior Princess, okay? So she's a warrior. It's different than taking somebody's actual deity and calling it your own when you're not fully invested in the culture. And that's just my opinion. Um, but I do think we need to be really careful when it comes to that so we're not treading on other people's cultures and watering them down. Um, so to be a pagan is to be outside of the Abrahamic faiths. And to... Uh, there's many people who are pagan. The majority of the world um, are pagans. And most cultures stem from a pagan background, okay? We are all basically pagans to begin with when the world first came around before Christ, okay? So that's another video for another day. So just dissect that, hopefully explain that, okay? Um, but you don't have to be a witch to work with gods or goddesses of other faiths, okay? It's a faith. And if it's not a faith that you are wanting to adopt, then it would be an archetype. Okay, so the next question is, do you do a dedication ritual if you're working with her? Because I'm thinking of worshiping her as I'm not far enough into my craft with any deities. Do I need to do something like this to do so? Um, 
yes and no. It's totally up to you, honestly. You can create a working relationship with the deity and do an exchange of energy. So, for example, if you don't want to worship them, you can create a working relationship where you offer an act of service to help their cause, whatever they decide. For example, um, I know one uh, Celtic witch on here, she works with the Morrigan, um, and she's her matron goddess, but she actually has more of a working relationship um, with her, um, where they have like a whole contract going on. Um, so you really want to decide what you want. So first, I would start off myself with a working relationship, building that relationship. And then if you decide that this is an energy that you really want to connect with and stay with and be dedicated to, then do so. But I wouldn't dedicate to an, a goddess or a god unless you are taking it very, very seriously and it's something that you want to keep with the rest of your life. Um, otherwise, you're just basically saying, yeah, I connect to you and I am going to create a relationship with you and then ghosting them, which is not cool. <laughs> That's not a good thing to do, especially in spirituality. You want to be very sure of yourself. So it's totally up to you. You can do a dedication if you're very sure, but I wouldn't do that until you're 100% sure that you want to work with this god or goddess for a foreseeable future. And... Um, and with that being said, you can, like, stop working with gods or goddesses if you feel like you've run the course of the lessons that you can learn from them. And that's okay, too. You can say thank you and say, I'm going to focus on this area of my life for right now. Um, but they'll still be a god or goddess to you, you know? You can still make offerings and continue that relationship and thank them but not work energetically with them and that's totally okay too um without completely ditching them that's not something you really want to do that's not fair okay that's it for the video guys thank you so much for all of your questions if you have any other questions at all when it comes to aphrodite um or bridget or any of the goddesses that i do work with in my pantheons let me know in the comments below or if you have any questions on how to reach out to gods or goddesses or starting your pagan path, your witchcraft path, because I do talk about all of that stuff here. Um, let me know in the comments below and I can make future videos on those. There is going to be a video all about Aphrodite and working with Aphrodite and reaching out to deities and then also working with the love aspect. So one video is going to be Aphrodite and working with her as a goddess archetype and then working with her as just an archetype of love. Okay, the love goddess archetype, the whole thing. They're two different different things so um that's one video and then the other one is going to be a video all about um how to reach out to deities and kind of my method of doing so if you're into all of that type of stuff make sure if you're not yet subscribed to subscribe to my channel hit the like button to let me know that you're into this kind of videos so that i can make more of them for you as well and i love you guys so very much and i'll see you guys in the next video next week and stay wicked